Calaroga Shark Media. Bradley Ho, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Ellen DeGeneres' new special is out on Netflix today. I love this tweet from Michael Ian Black who wrote, She's saying she got kicked out of show business during her special on the top paid streaming platform in the world? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Hey, you know who's really good at keeping a secret? John Mulaney. Say John Mulaney had a massive drug problem. He wouldn't let you know or say he was going to have a second child. He wouldn't tell you about it, but Olivia Munn went on Instagram and wrote, May June Mulaney came into the world September 14th, 2024, the year of the dragon. May spells her name M-E-I. Olivia Munn wrote, I had so many profound emotions about not being able to carry my daughter. When I first met our gestational surrogate, we spoke mother to mother. She showed me so much grace and understanding. I knew I had found a real-life angel. Words cannot express my gratitude that she kept our baby safe for nine months and made our dreams come true. I'm so proud of my little plum, my little dragon, for making the journey to be with us. My heart has exploded. She added that May means plum in Chinese. Mulaney shared the photo on his Instagram as well, but also added a video of baby May spitting up on Mulaney's shirt as he burped her. Now, if you're a regular listener to this program, you may have picked up. I'm not the biggest fan of most Adam Sandler movies, although to be fair to Adam Sandler, like three of the last five have been pretty good. So maybe he's getting better, which leads to the question, should I be in an Adam Sandler movie? I saw this on Backstage, September 24th in New Jersey, West Orange, New Jersey. I could be there in half an hour. Exterior day shoot, non-sag rate, $176 for 10 hours. That's $16 an hour. The background role is not covered by SAG after CBA. You must be able to present valid ID to fill out a federal I-9 form to be paid. Height, weight, and clothing sizes are used for costuming purposes only, unless needed for the casting of stand-ins or photo doubles. Now, what's crazy is the listing says Monday, September 24th. That's not a thing this year. <laughs> the next Monday, September 24th, probably for not another five years. I think they misspoke here, but it says September 24th twice. So I think that's today. Should I go? Should I be in an Adam Sandler movie? Wouldn't that be amazing? Do you like Saturday Night Live? Well, good, because we are going to talk about Saturday Night Live every single day for the next nine months. <laughs> Let's pick away at that Lorne Michaels interview. He was talking about the Shane Gillis incident, as it's now called. Wow. Lorne said, we had a bad time when I added Shane to the cast in 2019. He got beat up for things he'd done years earlier. And the overreaction to it was so stunning. And the velocity of it was 200 Asian companies were going to boycott the show. It became a scandal. And I go, no, no, he's just starting. And he's really funny. And you don't know how we're going to use him. Well, that's interesting. Why did you fire him then? Back then, Shane apologized to anyone who's actually offended by anything I said. He later called his own apology corny and took it back. You may recall Shane Gillis hosted SNL in February. Lord said, oh, right, he's really talented. He would have been really good for us. I dabbled with this yesterday. Who's going to play Trump? I'm very sad to think that they might not have James Austin Johnson do Trump, especially if they bring Alec Baldwin back. They asked Lauren point blank. Will Johnson continue playing Trump or do you welcome Alec Baldwin back? Lauren said, I think James will be there, but I don't want to get into what I'm doing. Trump has morphed. James, who I think is brilliant, played Trump as the sort of diminished Trump, the guy at the back of the hardware store holding court, and that played because it felt relevant. But we're going to have to reinvent it again because, well, you saw the debate. One of the great parts of show business is that you can't come back with the same show, so all these characters have to be re-examined. And if it makes sense and feels relevant, you know you're on the right track. You know... I don't agree, but Lorne Michaels has been more successful than I have. Who am I to tell Lorne Michaels that uh, that's a bad idea? 50 years in, of course, we all overlooked the five years. Lorne didn't do SNL. 45 of 50 years in, Lorne deserves some credit here. For younger people, after the initial cast left, Lorne also laughed and was not the showrunner from like 1980 through 84 and then came back. Doesn't mean it's bad. I'm just telling you what happened. The first year without Lorne was a disaster. The show almost got canceled. The AV Club writes, over the last five years alone, the show has adjusted its take on Joe Biden at least five times with Woody Harrelson and Jim Carrey playing candidate Biden, Alex Moffat, James Austin Johnson, and finally Mikey Day playing him as president. Lauren told The Hollywood Reporter, I think we have the people to play the candidates and it should be fun. SNL back Saturday. Chloe Fineman told Variety, I'm hoping that I can finally make my Melania Trump debut. She said she's been sitting on her impression of Melania for about five years. The Gonzaga Bulletin went to go see Theo Vaughn. They had a review. Let's see what they said. Armed with a mullet, Louisiana in accent, and a somewhat unorthodox comedic style, Theo Vaughn took on the Spokane Arena on September 12th with a packed house. Vaughn managed to address today's topics with his personal flair and humor. 
Von Set matched the style of his podcast. He clearly had topics that he thought about beforehand and wanted to touch on, yet it seemed most of the show was off the dome. The entire energy and success of the event was less owned to Vaughn's practice and script, but more to his natural charisma and understanding of his audience. Thus, the show had a conversational, casual tone to it. One man ended up being the victim of Vaughn's crowd work abilities, with Vaughn jokingly accusing him of being a pedophile. The man later revealed himself to be working as a teacher. That got a lot of laughs. The Gonzaga Bulletin writes, Perhaps the most interesting aspect of Vaughn's comedy is the underlying sense of satire in relation to the topics he seems to enjoy. While the audience hangs on every joke about gun ownership and Down syndrome, they seem to miss the reference to Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Telltale Heart. Vaughn knows his audience, but it doesn't seem that the audience knows Vaughn. Interesting. Kamala Harris is not going to the Al Smith dinner. That's being hosted by Jim Gaffigan. Sorry, Jim. Kamala also appeared on Oprah's Unite for America rally. On that, she said, if somebody breaks in my house, they're getting shot. Sorry. Also on that phone call, Chris Rock. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> and while we're being political, the cast of Veep will reunite for a virtual table read in support of helping Dems win up and down the ballot in Wisconsin. This takes place on the 29th at 8 p.m. Cast members from Veep will perform a table read of the show's third season episode, Crate. Hosted by Stephen Colbert, Crate is the season three episode where Julia's character finds out the current president is stepping down, elevating her to the Oval Office. Julia told The Hollywood Reporter, We tried to find an old episode where the president accused immigrants of eating dogs and cats, <laughs> but back when we were making Veep, that seemed insane and over the top. Send your letters to Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I'm just reporting here. Amy Poehler will get top honors at the Bring Change to Minds 12th Annual Revels and Revelation Fundraiser. That is a mouthful. It's an award given by Robin Williams' children, Zach, Zelda, and Cody. The honor is presented to entertainers who spread laughter and awareness through acts of kindness, charity, and revelatory honesty that makes people feel heard, seen, and less alone, and through many ways make the world a brighter, more open, and caring place. Amy Poehler will accept the award during an event held at a private residence in Woodside, California on World Mental Health Day, October 10th. Gavin Matz is one of the comedians you should and will know, according to Vulture. Which comedian's career trajectory would you most like to follow? He said Sinbad, Chelsea Peretti, Norm MacDonald. Worst show? I love a bad show and a bomb. What a funny memory imprint to leave on random people who just wanted to have a good time. Three years ago, I headlined a show in D.C. I was forced to deal with a group of drunk hecklers for 30 minutes until they were finally kicked out. As they were being kicked out, a lady from their group sneak attacked me on stage, ripped the mic cord, chucked the mic across the room. Then another person from their group ended up with the mic and started explaining their case to the crowd. It was chaos. After it settled, they made me go back on stage and finish my set. <laughs> I don't know why I had to go back on stage. What's the biggest financial hurdle you've encountered, Gavin? I would say the need to have money and to keep pursuing a dream is a pretty tough financial hurdle. And stand up, you're constantly going out of pocket. Comedy clubs will play for your travel, but only at the end of your weekend. So you're out like $600 like two months in advance. Paying for travel up front really lessens the incentive for me to want to go to Phoenix. All right, you got an unpopular comedy opinion, Gavin said. In a random interview I did in 21, I said that stand-up comedians should be forced to retire at 40. I take it back. Longevity in comedy is a miracle, and I look up to anyone who's made a career out of it. Though I do believe you should cap out at four comedy specials. You know, that's probably pretty smart. Best comedy advice, worst comedy advice? Best, do not hold the mic in front of your mouth. Good advice. This saved me at least two years of talking straight into the microphone. Worst advice, don't wear those pants on stage. Bad advice. Wear whatever you want. And that is your comedy news for today. If you enjoy the program, tell a friend about it. They might like it too. You know what I'm saying? Let's grow the show. Actually, the number's been doing really well. I appreciate you all. If you'd like this thing without commercials, there's a link in the show notes that'll tell you how that works. Uh, let me be better about promoting five good news stories. That's a program I also host Monday, Wednesday, Friday. There are five stories, and they're all good news or smiles, a lot of Guinness records, a lot of ridiculous things, uh, a lot of animal stories. It's fun. Check it out. Five good news stories wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow.